Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Center.com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with backwards compatibility for the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. As many of you know, if you have, let's say, an X370 motherboard, you can buy a Matisse CPU and then plonk it into that motherboard, assuming you've done a BIOS update and you're good to go. But there have been some questions regarding exactly what CPUs will work in which motherboards. And you might recall that a couple of days ago, I put out a video detailing some rumors from a Chinese website. I'll link to that video in the description to this video. Now, the report was actually rather fascinating because it did uh, go into the fact that certain motherboards, namely the A320 chipset, would likely not be compatible with the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. Now you're going to scratch your head and ask, well, why is that? Is it because things such as uh, VRMs? Is it perhaps a BIOS limitation? Maybe, for example, motherboard manufacturers did not include large enough BIOS chips to include to actually be able to update the ROMs and other theories. Well, no, according to this source that was uh, speaking to the website anyway, it was not that at all. It was because AMD themselves wanted to, quote, sell more motherboards, although, of course, this report is unsubstantiated. The website Tom's Hardware are reporting that Asus have updated 35 motherboards from the AMD lineup. These are the X370 uh, as well as the uh, B350 motherboards. We've got the X470 and also the B450 boards. And if you're thinking, hmm, where's the, where's the A320 boards, then indeed you won't be the only ones. It is starting to look more and more like AMD are not going to be updating the older boards. We can only wait for official confirmation on this, and before you get your pitch forked out, it is possible it is for an innocent reason. Once again, perhaps something like AMD did not feel like enough uh, motherboard manufacturers had a large enough BIOS chips on the board. And because the A320 chipset is also not exactly robust often in terms of let's say vrm design and the just general uh boards are typically on the cheaper side let's just be totally honest maybe amd did not feel comfortable letting the ryzen 3000 cpus run on those boards because it's actually really interesting because if you look at the leaks so far of the x570 stuff the vrms and the actual um pchs on those uh on those motherboards appear to have some type of active cooling and indeed one of the uh, videos that i put out mm, a couple of months ago now from actually maybe about a month ago from one of my sources told me that uh, amd had told motherboard manufacturers as well as their partners that we suggest you design your motherboards accordingly in that very same report, though, that I mentioned from a couple of days ago, we also learned other details as well, including the clock speed so far of the chips that AMD have provided o uh, OEMs as well as motherboard manufacturers is around 4.5 gigahertz. So it's going to be really fascinating to see what final revision silicon for these chips is uh, capable of doing. And don't forget, there is things such as overclocking as well. So perhaps... Uh, you know, the chips are capable of around 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz, but maybe there is a possibility that users will be able to overclock them to, let's say, 5 gigahertz. But I do question that a little bit, primarily because I think AMD would want to crank the chips up as high as possible. And obviously, you've got Precision Boost as well as XFR. Uh, so just the way AMD actually uh, arc uh, engineers their, their chips, they generally run close to their maximum performance potential, give or take a few hundred megahertz. So the PlayStation 5 is all but certainly not going to debut this year. In fact, Sony themselves have confirmed that we won't be seeing the system for the next 12 months. Most likely we're going to see the PS5 launch in the third or fourth quarter. Sony have commented on certain specifications for the new console. We know it's Zen 2 based. We know it's got a Narve GPU. It's got some form of ray tracing, a very fast SSD and a 3D audio chip. Naturally, any rumours on the internet should be taken with some level of scepticism, because that's healthy. But a user on Reddit has provided some evidence, namely an image from a Sony meeting. And you can read the post yourself because it's on screen. But let's go into the specifications because there are some interesting things here. 
So it's a 7nm custom Zen CPU, 8 cores and is clocked at 3.2 GHz. It's a custom AMD Nave GPU. It's running at 1.8 GHz, 56 compute units and outputs around 12.9 teraflops of power. Uh, so this is actually slightly lower from what we've seen from other leaks, which listed at around 14 teraflops, although another leak has said that Sony are going from around the 12.5 to around the 14 teraflop, and they're yet to exactly figure out what they're aiming for here. So 56 compute units, 1.8 gigahertz. If you do the math on that, it does actually make 12.9 uh, teraflops of powers, which is definitely good. There is hardware-based ray tracing capability, 24 gigabytes, 24 gigabytes of RAM. Interestingly, there's an embedded SSD, and this is paired with a hard disk drive. So it seems that there is an embedded SSD, which I'm going to assume is for some type of caching, but the hard disk itself is probably going to be much larger in capacity. So I would assume anyway, perhaps the games that you've been using most frequently, or maybe the game you're using now, that data would be uh, on a cache of the SSD. And then older titles, let's say if you've not played a game in like three weeks time or something like that, maybe that would only be stored on the hard disk. But of course, it probably would also depend on the number of titles you're playing and the capacity of the SSD. I wonder if it's going to be upgradable. There's also no mention of PSVR2 and backwards compatibility will only work natively for the PlayStation 4. PS3 is going to only be playable via PS Now. There's actually been a couple of murmurs of this very fact, by the way, that PS3 titles will not run on PS5, and so the backwards compatibility, and indeed the patterns I've seen so far, where it's basically changing the CPU to much close, much more closely emulate that of the uh, CPU found inside the PS4, as well as the Xbox One, and upwards the Jaguar CPU, I wouldn't be super duper surprised if this event actually did occur. While we have one an image, but two, there have actually been uh, some people who have been uh, commenting that the reason AMD uh, actually released the specifications, or at least some of the specifications for the PS5, is because now they are actually distributing development kits to more uh, developers. So uh, I believe it was Jason Schreier who was the first person to mention this on Twitter, but there have been other uh, individuals who reported the same thing. So in other words, developers, if you provide them development kits, they start talking amongst themselves and perhaps, you know, their friends as well. And eventually, of course, this stuff does leak out, NDAs or not. So Sony for try and jump in front of the train and do a controlled leak of sorts and at least get some positive PR out of it just makes sense. So for a small piece of Xbox news, a user on Twitter by the name of Clobril, he is well known for Xbox news and that's putting it extremely mildly, has shared an image on Twitter. And this image is redacted heavily and by heavily I mean good luck discerning pretty much anything. But there is one thing you can see that is very interesting and that concerns the actual drives of the console. So indeed we see Lockhart and Anaconda. We've heard those names so many times it's not even a leak anymore. It's just synonymous with the next generation systems. But for storage there is a one terabyte NVMe SSD which supposedly is included in both systems. Backwards compatibility as well looks like it's there, although we can't see which systems it's backwardly compatible for. Furthermore, it looks like there's ray tracing mentioned in both. Let's read the Lockhart and Anaconda. Bear in mind, uh, this is not an official Xbox slide. Clobril himself has commented. Instead, it's more something that he kind of put together. Oh, and the, S and the XDK is actually known as Dante, which I kind of like, I must say. Anyway, the Lockhart is the lowest price of the two systems. And in fact, AM, uh, apparently it's going to be the lowest price next generation console. So it's going to be cheaper than that of the PlayStation 5. Engage and deliver new gamers from day one. Xbox delivers the most value to all gamers. That's quite bold. And Aconda, meanwhile, is aiming to be the performance leader. So if the PlayStation 5 uh, leak has been true so far of 12.9 T flops, they need to hit 13 or above. Let's face it, 
I think most people would not be that impressed if Anaconda was 13 teaflops, if the PS5 was 12.9, so really we can say that Microsoft needs to target 14. But anyway, Xbox is an undisputed performance leader. Games games uh, look and play best on Xbox and flagship consoles drive Halo effect across ecosystem, end quote. I can say though from my perspective, the major concern I have with two Xbox models concerns the pricing strategy because what people might do and obviously this is just me guessing is they could look at the PlayStation 5 I'm just going to throw numbers out in terms of pricing no one knows what these systems are going to be uh, priced at but let's just say that Microsoft released Lockhart at $299 US dollars right $250 $299 US dollars the PlayStation 5 comes in at $399 US dollars and Anaconda comes in at let's say 500 US dollars. So a lot of folks might just look at it and say, hmm, well, I'm not really that happy about paying four, uh, 500 bucks for a console. And I also don't really want to get Lockhart. I mean, okay, it's next generation, but it's also not, yeah, uh, I, I've got 4K TV. You know what? I'm going to go with a PlayStation 5 because it's cheaper than what the you know flagship Xbox system is, but it's also considerably more powerful than the lower end SKU. So that could be one issue of Microsoft having a two-pronged strategy. It also, of course, means the developers right off the gate have to do a lot more work for both systems. Then again, it also comes down to other things as well, like exclusives and what their strategy is for marketing and so many other things. So right now, it's a lot of stuff up in the air. With all of that said, though, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, well, you know what to do. You can, well, like the video. That would be pretty much what you have to do. You can also uh, subscribe to the channel, which would be super-duper helpful. And with that said, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.